In a previous video, I demonstrated how useful a power bank can be to use your portable electronics, like a hand warmer. But sometimes you need a bit more capacity to, for example, charge up your phone multiple times. That is the moment when you bring out the big stuff. So in this versus episode, let's compare the efficiency, true capacity and overall features of a 22400mAh power bank from EC Technology with a no-name solar power bank with whopping 50,000mAh. Let's get started. First of all, let's talk about every consumer concerns. The looks. The brand bank looks good in black and red and the quality of the plastic enclosure is really nice. On the other hand, I also like the metal and solar parts of the other bank, but the white plastic just looks a bit cheap. We also got 4 LEDs on both gadgets to indicate the charge state and a small 1 watt LED as a torch. Now let's get technical and see how fast we can charge them up. Both of them claim that they have a maximum of 2 amps as an input. And there is no problem with the EC Technology one, which fires right up to just below 2 amps. The solar one does not really like to do that. Starts out slow and then only reaches around 900 milliamps. Thanks manufacturer for telling me lies. I hope they at least tell me the truth about the output capabilities. Let's hook everything up and hope for a 1 amp output. Which is of course bullshit. Around 500 milliamps it is. And the 2 amp output port only delivers me roughly around 1 amp. Maybe they forgot to divide the rating by 2. That would actually make sense. The brand power bank does actually deliver what they promise with their 1 amp output. But I think I reached the maximum charge rate of my phone at the 2 amp output. I will need to use my constant load to draw this much current. But before that I desoldered one bridge wire to add a precision current meter which will make the whole measuring part easier. I hooked up my USB wire and realized that all outputs of the brand bank can deliver up to 3.2 amps before shutting down. And the solar bank can actually deliver up to 2.2 amps on each port. I guess it is just very bad at detecting the correct charge currents. Now to the interesting part. Let's open them up. The solar bank is super easy to take apart by removing a couple of small screws. I guess they have nothing to hide. That might be sarcasm. The red bank really took force to take apart and the case got obviously destroyed during the process. But that is okay, because I have other plans with the insides. Now let's test how efficient our converter circuit really is. I desoldered the positive wire from the circuits and replaced them with a jumper wire, which I can hook up to my multimeter. Then I connected my constant load, set it to around 1 amp and checked the output and input voltage and the input current. For the solar bank, we get an average efficiency of around 85%. Of course, it might change with different battery levels and output currents. On the other hand, the brand power bank reached an efficiency of around 90%, which is a nice difference between those two. Next, let's see how useful this polycrystalline solar panel really is. I connected my measuring equipment and positioned my panel nicely so that I get a maximum battery charge current of around 35 milliamps. So it would take around 60 days of continuous sunshine to charge the whole 50,000 milliamp hour batteries. That is just ridiculous and is only a way to trick people into thinking they can charge this whole thing solely by solar energy. And the best thing is that there is actually a charge state where it drains the batteries while saying that it's recharging them. Awesome! At the end, let's find out the true capacity of those banks. I charged them up completely and afterwards removed the battery packs from the circuit. 
Then I used my variable power supply to simulate the batteries to find out the cutoff voltage of the circuits. And it is apparently around 3.2 volts. Afterwards, I freed one lithium ion cell of each pack and started my usual capacity measurement, which you should already know from a previous video. The solar bank battery reaches 3.2 volts after around 1.5 hours, with a constant load of 1 amp. This equals to around 1.5 amp hour. With 5 of them in1 pack, it is around 7500 milliamp hour and not 50,000. The brand bank also went through the same test and reached the cutoff voltage after 2.5 hours. That would equal to around 2500 milliamp hour. With 8 of them inside the bank, we get around 20,000 milliamp hour. Since my test is rather inaccurate and the battery might not be fully charged up through the integrated circuits, I would say this is close enough. Let's summarize this. The solar bank offers for $25 a lot of lies. 5 1500 mAh batteries, a quite useless solar panel and an ok circuit. The other one offers what it promises and with a price of $39, one 2800 mAh battery only costs around $5. It is a good deal if you need new batteries and you get a decent charging circuit as well. EC technology is the clear winner this time. I hope you liked this video. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. That would be awesome. Stay creative and I will see you next time.